Is he good today? Amen. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. God is good all the time and all the time. And the devil is bad all the time and all the time. <laughs> It's so good to be back with you again, uh, Harvest Time family, and kudos to our wonderful friend and pastors, Pastor uh, Denise also, amen, and Pastor Glenn, uh, the family here. We love you, love you, love you, and of course, when it was time to come back, I had to do nothing but come back quick as I could, amen? Are you glad to see me? Yeah. Amen. Glad to be here. And what he said about that, and many of you were witnesses because you were here and saw that power of God just, just do that supernatural work, and that's what he does. That's what he does. And Pastor Glenn didn't know this, but I was going to come in a day earlier, uh, and I had my flight scheduled to be here on Tuesday just to get a little R&R, &R. but guess where I was Tuesday morning? In the dentist's office. <laughs> you didn't know that. And I missed my flight. Because I had had an emergency and something about this church and the dental thing, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I was able to get it fixed right before a holiday. That was a miracle. And my dentist took me right in and he just was great. And I came the next day and I'm here. Now, I, I heard you summons the Holy Spirit to be here. I heard you ask him and like a perfect gentleman, he's here. Amen. And then I heard you say something very dangerous. You said it. You said, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> you said it. You gave him that invitation to come into your life and to invade your life and to do whatever needs to be done. And I say amen to that. So the prayer has already been prayed. And again, it's good to uh, be here with you. And uh, I was happy to get off the plane and to see my friends, Gina and uh, Dan also. And I am excited about my book that's out. Amen. It's just been, it's great. And uh, get a chance to read it, but we, as Pastor said, there's uh, cards out for you to sign if you want me to send you a copy in a hardback or a softback, but I'm going to just read something from it. Would you like to hear it, just to whet your appetite? Yeah. So I'll just go to the first chapter. It's all good. It don't matter where I go, it's good. <laughs> uh, intentional transformation. I mean, that's, that's really powerful within itself uh, because if you really want to see change, you have to be intentional. And one of the things that I say in the book that it's a difference between uh, being intentional and having good intentions. So you'll read that good intentions leave the door open, but intentionality shuts the door and throw away the key. Amen. So uh, one of the quotes from uh, Shannon Adler, the most important journey will take, the most important journey you will take in your life will usually be the one of self-examination and transformation. Often, this is the scariest because it requires the greatest changes in your life. All right, here goes. Transformation requires an approach, a mindset, and a strategy. And I describe this course of action with one word, intentionality. To be intentional means, number one, you have a goal and, a, and have charted your course toward it. Number two, you have calculated the cost and decided you're going to pay it. Number three, you studied and devised a strategy to move toward. Number four, and finally, you have an absolute resolve to succeed and abide with no excuses. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. That's enough to want you to get the book. Who wants this one? <laughs> She's intentional. So let's go to the word of the Lord. Um, Lisa and Stewart, thank you for being here. It's good to see you. One of the things that I know uh, in this day and time that we're living in is that God is ready to reveal what has been concealed. God is ready to show us what we've never seen before. He's ready to uh, whisper to us what we've never known before. And he's ready to do some things that has never been done in the earth. It's all it's all about the timing of God. And if you know anything about the Garden of Eden, when uh, there were two trees in the garden, and then the Lord said that one tree you can't eat off of. Not that it was bad 
but it was just one tree it was not time to eat off of. And that we could eat out of this one tree because we could handle that knowledge that came from this one tree. But the other tree was just, we had to wait on that. And so he knew that something that's good for us, but out of the right, right, wrong timing, could be detrimental for us. Amen. So it's all about timing. There's some mysteries that have not been revealed in the earth yet. There's some things that God is going to do now that he couldn't do before because God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the alpha and the um, he's the beginning and the he's the first and the last. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the God in the beginning and he's the God at the end. So don't get stuck in the middle thinking that he's not going to be there for you because if he met you in the beginning, he's going to meet you in the end. He's the God in the valley and he's the God on the mountaintop. Amen. So he's just God, 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 God. And I'm so glad about the sovereignty of God because that is what I believe and that's what I fall on. When everything is in a ruckus, everything is, is havoc all over the place, I release myself to the sovereignty of God knowing that God knows everything. There's no 911 button that you can push that he doesn't know about. The good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly. And he's, he knows all about that. And he fashions us to be a part of this life that we'll have to uh, go through some things. And it's all good. Because he uses it for uh, his purpose. Amen. I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29 says. And there are plans not to harm you, but it's planned to give you a good end. And God is going to give all of us a good end. So we understand some scriptures that says in the book of Deuteronomy 29 and 29, uh, the secret things belong to the Lord. The things that's not revealed yet, the hidden things. He only knows those things. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that they may know and follow all the words of the law. So it's a secret. It's hidden. It's concealed until he decides to release it. But once it's released, it belongs to us. And we have an obligation. We have, uh, we, we, it's up to us to follow once it's revealed. And, and we can't walk in the light until we see it. And then when we see it, the Bible says it's time for us to take that responsibility and walk in that light. Yeah. So I want to I want to talk about a couple of things today, and I want you to go away knowing that I want to talk about something that has not been revealed that you don't know that's hidden on the inside of you. Then I want to talk about how we get it out. So I'm I'm, I'm just going to tell you it's Christ in you, and let it flow. That's what we want to flow. Christ in me, Christ in you, and we want him to flow. I want, to, I want you to really get a clear picture to understanding what you carry tonight. I want you to understand how powerful you are, what a tool you are to the kingdom of God. I want you to know that you're just not a mere man or woman or husband or wife or church goer, but in the kingdom of God, you're his righteousness. He's depending on us. We're his creation, and he is looking for his glory to come from us. Ephesians 1 talks about the Apostle Paul. He lets us know that we were made uh, for his glory. We were made for him. The Bible says in Genesis that we were made in his image. So it's a purpose for our existence, and I want us to know tonight. I mean, I want the light bulb to come on. I, I want the, the, the fireworks to go out in your heart and your spirit to say, wow, I'm all of that. I'm all of that. I want you to leave here and say, I am all of that. Yeah. I want you to go home and tell your husband, say, you don't know who I am. Put your hand on your hip and say, you don't know who I am. You know, husband, I need you to tell your wife I'm somebody. You know, and as a person of color standing up here, I would say to you, I didn't need God bless Brother Jesse Jackson to tell me that I'm somebody. I can look in the Word and say, I am wonderfully and fearfully made in the image of God, and I am somebody because I've got treasure in my trash. I got divinity in my dust. And I have a God that's going to be glorified out of my life as I live for him. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 25 and 2 says this. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. Amen? And so as he begins to reveal something, we begin to search out. How many are seekers today? 
Not just, not, just, not just lookers, but I'm talking about seeking, seeking the kingdom. If you lose something, if you, you, you lose something, you don't just look for it. You just, you just seek it out until you find it. And you don't stop looking. You don't stop searching until you find it. And that's what God is looking for, hungry people that are seeking after him, that are looking, that wants more, that want more and more, and that will find him. So it's, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but, for, but the glory of kings, you and I, kings and priests in the earth, to search it out. Amen? I want to say to you, people of God, that our hour has come. Our hour has come. Jesus said that in the 17th chapter of the book of John, and he was talking about it as he was getting ready to the, go to the cross. But I want to say that to you because tonight, before we can let it flow, we've got to go to the cross. Amen? And, and, and we need to know that our hour has come for God to see the, and get the fullness out of us. The purpose for us being here today and, and the reason is not just to uh, be saved and go to heaven, but Christ wants to be formed in us. So this, this, this light that's in us, this, this treasure that's in us, that he wants the world to know and experience, and as it is with us, it shall be with them. There has to be some examples of this word. There has to be some demonstration of the word. We can all say what it says, but we have to be what it says. And the Bible says that we are living epistles that are read by men every day. So somebody's reading your life today. Somebody's looking at you, seeing if you are who you say you are according to this word. And so it, even in, to stay in, uh, in con conjunction with the scripture today and, and also with the lesson text uh, and also with the theme, uh, let it flow, what we want to flow out of us. I don't need to be a new and improved Judy. I don't need to be a better Judy. The Bible says if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is the new creation. He's a new creature. So, so he's not, I'm not trying to get God to make me like better like that. I want him to be formed in me. I want Christ. Paul said, I must decrease so he can increase. And so I, I don't want you to see Judy. I want you to see the Christ man in me. And that's what he's after. That's what he's after. And that's what we want to flow out of us is the Christ, the life of Christ. That's the only, that's real Christianity. That's Christianity. And the word says that if any man come unto me, let him deny himself. This old outer share, this old man, this flesh man, let him deny himself and follow me. That means follow his ways, follow his instructions, follow his example. That's what real Christianity is. It's Christ-like. Sometimes we think, Pastor, it's churchianity, but it's not. It's Christianity. And so I don't know about you, but that's my desire and that's my goal. I want to be more and more like him. And sometimes and a lot of times and most of the times there is a requirement for me to put this flesh under subjection, which means that I can't say what I want to say sometimes. Hello, somebody. When your gravy runs all over my plate. I want to say a few choice words to you. <laughs> Come on, be honest, be honest. But, but when I think about who I am and whose I am, and, and, and I want to mark the perfect man, which is only Christ Jesus, I have to say, down, boy, down, down, count to 10, 20, 30, whatever you need to do, but get it under control. You know, and it's, and it's a disciplined life that we live. It, it, that's the only way that we're going to be able to let it flow. And I will tell you this. I will tell you that the flowing is not the problem. The flow is not the problem. The problem is we've well, got to move out the way. And when we move out of the way, when we're broken, then the flow comes automatically. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Yeah, just, just open up the gate and let it flow. Amen. Yeah, the Bible says in John 7 and 38, I'll probably tell that the scripture again. He says, uh, if you can believe that the scripture has said, has said, out of your belly, out of your innermost being, shall out of your out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living waters. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a done deal, really. It's it's Christ's work in us, 
and Christ, the hope of glory, as we'll read. And that's what has to flow out of us. So that means we have to take a back seat, people. We have to get out of the way. And we have to deny ourselves. And we have to leave our egos. And we have to leave our, our agendas on the, and put them someplace out so it can flow, so he can flow out of us. Um, I always understand that Christ is forming a work in us. And he's, there's a continual work on God's calendar. Uh, that's going on in our life. He's, he's always moving and he's always um, uh, causing things to happen in us so that we can be formed like him. And we don't like trials and tribulations and, and we don't like the things that buffet us and that gets what needs to come out of us and gets what needs to come out of the way. We don't like it, but it's necessary. Somebody say it's necessary. It's necessary to see the greatness that's been concealed in us, that's been hidden in us. It's in us. It's just, it's hiding in us. It's, it's concealed. And, and what I say today that the hour has come for God to reveal himself through us so the world can see this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine in my home, on my job, in the marketplace, everywhere I go, that people will see the goodness of God. They will see the glory of God in me. And then they'll say, oh, I, I need to be like that. What must I do? What must I do? What must I do to be like that? The greatness of God concealed in us. Understanding who we are in Christ. Um, understanding it enough that we get to be intentional. Understanding that there's a requirement. Understanding that there's some things that we have to do. It's not, it's, 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 it's not uh, uh, our, our, our righteousness. It's his righteousness. But we, there, there's, a, there's a removal, there's a removal of some things for it to come out and, be, and for it to come into fruition. So the greatness of God is in us. Say it, he's in me. He's Concealed, hidden for a time. Um, the timing which I believe that God is saying now. And I think that if we can understand, uh, Pastor Glenn, if we can understand three things that we'll be able to advance the kingdom and we'll be able to um, uh, allow the work of God to come forth out of our life. If we can understand, number one, that we are vessels, that we are vessels, we're containers, we're vessels, we're instruments. If we can understand that. Number two, if we can understand that we are stewards, that, that, that we're, we're, we're managing something, we're, we're taking care of something, we're, we're holding on to something, we're, we're distributing something. We can understand that. Number three, if we can understand that we are sons and daughters, sons and daughters of the living God, not just, just people, but we are sons and daughters of the most high God, we will understand our value. We understand how valuable we are to our Father. We understand what we carry. It's our inheritance. We're sons and daughters, and we have a spiritual inheritance. Yeah. And so when we understand that we're vessels, that we, we're carrying something, I'm packing tonight. I'm packing tonight. I mean, I, I'm, I'm powerful tonight. The kingdom of God is within me. And if we understand that it's not me, but it's the stuff in me. It's the power that works in me. We understand that, that he's given us this treasure to, 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 to hold on and to distri distribute it and to give it out. And if we understand that we have a wonderful relationship with our Heavenly Father and there is nothing that he would withhold from us and there is nothing that he would not do for us. And then we have the ability to be a partaker of his divine nature because we're his kids. Your son or daughter should look like you and act like you should. Should. Because they have your genes. Because they have your spirit. So it is with us in, 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 in the spirit realm. And so when I say let it flow, I want us to know what we have in us and how valuable it is. And I want you to put a high value on what God has given us. Um, the, uh, the, the Bible says in Corinthians, the second chapter, the fourth verse. I'm just going to go ahead and read the main scripture for it tonight. The second, second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul talks about the treasures in jars of clay. And I was going to start at the seventh verse, but it, please allow me to just read the first 
and then go on to the seventh verse because it's just really good. And he says this, therefore, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry. We do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is not veiled to those who are perishing. The gods of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. How many know that to be true? The gods of this age have blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but we preach Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God said, let light shine out of darkness my God, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. The seventh verse. For we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Now, listen to this journey that we're on every day. Listen to life. Now, I'm going to just tell you about life right now through the scriptures. You ready? We are pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down. Is this not life, people? Is this not life? Struck down but not destroyed. And, you know, just reading that, crushed but not perplexed, you know, in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. You know, after each segment, there's a comma. Come on, somebody say, thank God for the commas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God they're not periods. <laughs> Thank God that we cross over the comma and get on the other side because this is life and this is life in this earthen vessel. This is life. We're, we're carrying a, 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 a weight of glory in us. We're carrying a treasure in this earthen vessel. So we're subject to all of the, 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 the workings and the ills of this life. We're subject to the wear and tear of this body. We're subject to everything this world is doing because you know why? We came from dust. We came from dirt. And so we're subject to these earthly matters. But the Lord gives us that great hope that, that it ain't over. You may go down, but you don't have to stay down. You may get hit, but you don't have to stay hit. There's always restoration. There's always revival. There's always regaining strength. There's always renewal. There's always a way out. Always a way out. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He will never put more on us than we can bear. But he says, you have to go through this. David said, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Listen, some things that we have to go through in this earth, you can't pray it off. You can't fast it off. You can't positively think it off. You just got to cope with it and go through it with the strength and the help of God and know that greater that's in you is greater than he that is in the world. Knowing that you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Hallelujah. See, this is what we have to let flow. What the scripture has said. Not what our circumstances say. Not what things say. We, we, we look at the word and we say, Lord, let it flow out of us. The hope of glory, not the despair the hope of glory. And so the scripture goes on to say that we also carry around in our body. Now, I'm getting ready to get a little deep here now. Okay, but stay with me. We always carry around in our body the depth 
of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life, we're given over to death so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. What is that saying? That is saying as Jesus went to the cross, we've got a cross to go to in a sense. He's done all of the work. He's done all of the work. And as we look back at the cross, we understand that the work of the cross is already done. And this is where we take our hope at. He's already done the work. And so we bear in our bodies his work. Yes. So, so what we have to understand is, is that just like Jesus, when he was, was, was mocked and, and, and brutally uh, uh, beaten and, and, and had to go to, to the grave and hell and death and dying and death and dying, that one day he got up. One day that he became not anymore Jesus, but he's the Christ now. He's the anointed, but he had to go through something to get there. He had to pull off this earthen man. He had to pull off this shell the shell. He had to be broken. Everybody say be broken. He had to be broken so that the glory of God could be seen. And this is what I want to tell you as I set the, the pace for these series of meetings that we're having to let it flow. In order for it to let flow, we've got to be broken. We've got to be broken. You've got to break the shell to get the nut, people. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta break the jar open to get anything that you wanna do. You gotta open, you gotta open something. Take the lid off. You gotta open up the things that have hindered the flow. Let's look at that. The things that have hindered the flow of God in our life. The things that have, that, that have caused us not to know. There's a, a little quote that um, uh, Thomas Merton wrote and I wrote it, that he, that he quotes and I wrote it down. It says, ask me what I am living for and ask me what's keeping me from living that fully. Ask me, in context with tonight, ask me what I have in me. Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. They had something. I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk, up and walk. So they had that power. So ask me, what do I have on the inside of me? And then ask me, what's been hindering it from coming out and flowing? Maybe that's the question on the table tonight on the floor. What has been hindering the flow of God? Because the problem is not the flow of God. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. Because the time has come for him to reveal himself in the fullness. The time has come for the world to see mega God. The time has come for God to be revealed to every Christian, every kindred, every kind, every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every people. It's time for the unveiling of Jesus Christ. So I would say to us, the church of Jesus Christ, what have hindered the flow of God from coming out of our lives? Colossians tells us, 126 and 127, the mystery hidden, again concealed, the mystery hidden from ages and generation, but now, everybody say now, now. but now made manifest to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, and this is this treasure, this is the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Come on, people. That's, enough. that's, that's a lot to wrap your mind around. Christ in me, as, 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 as we know our own selves. Christ in me, give me, come on, are you kidding? 
Christ in me, I, I know who I am. You may not know who I am, but I know who I am. I may not know what you've done, but you know what you've done. And we look at our frailty, we look at our humanity, we look at our ups and our downs, our ins and our outs, we know our intentions, we know our unintentions, we know all of that. But he still says, you are my vessel. He still says, you are my son and you are my daughter. He still says, I'm putting a treasure in your earthen vessel. He still says that, that your temple, your body is the temple of the living God. And I want to dwell in you. I want to sup with you and you and me. He still gives us all this glory. He still gives us all this honor. And he knows us like we know us. Amen. Bible says he knows the number of hairs that's on our hairs. But, and he still put this treasure in us. On your worst day, you can whip the enemy. On your worst day, you are somebody. On your worst day. You have the ability to decree and declare a thing. On your worst day, you have a creative word in your mouth and you can change the atmosphere. You can change things. You can call those things that be not as they were because you have a creative word in you. On your worst day, because that is the nature of God in you. That is the spirit of God in you. And you can't mess up the spirit of God in you. Come on, somebody. You cannot mess up the spirit of God in you. That is his gift. That is his work. That's good news. It's good news. Yeah. Thank you, pastor. So when we understand that Christ in us is the hope for the world, if they don't see us, if they don't, if they don't see Christ in us, then there's nothing flowing. Let it flow. Let it flow, people. You know, turn it up. Turn up. Turn it all the way up. Come on, let's get lit for Jesus. How about that? Been around my young people here. Let's get lit for Jesus. Let's turn up for Jesus. It's the light that the people need to see. It's the light of the world. And when, we, when they see the light in us, they can't help. It's infectious. They can't help but want to know because it's the good. It's the treasure. It's the mystery. Can't believe that he's using me right now. But he is. I mean, he is real. And you, you're hearing him. You're hearing him. And the same way with you. He doesn't look at your mistakes. He looks at him in you. He, he looks at his gift and his glory in you. He looks at his treasure in you while you're still beating yourself up. He's like, I don't, you, 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 you want to say how bad you are. You want to say what you don't deserve. You want to say what you're not. He's like, I don't have time for that. That's, that's, I didn't die on the cross for you to tell me that. I didn't die on the cross for you to have low esteem about yourself. It's my righteousness that you have. It's my power that you have. So, it, it, so get a grip. Come on, somebody. We do put a lot of importance on ourselves. And, and, and that stops us. That's hindered the, the, the flow of God because we think, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not, I don't know enough. I can't do that. I've not been in church long enough. No, it's, it's, it ain't about you. It's, it's not your words that they need to hear. It's not your articulation. It's not your intelligence. It's, it, it's not your expertise. It's, it's not you. It's Christ. It's his words. That is why the apostle Paul was able to say, I am not ashamed of this gospel, for it is the power of Christ. It is the power of God that will draw men unto salvation. I can stand here and, and I can say, lay hands on you, or I can say, be healed in the name of Jesus, because I know it's not my power. I know it's his power. Hallelujah. And I know I'm just a vessel. I'm just a willing vessel. I'm an intentional vessel. I'm a steward. I'm a son and a daughter of the most high God. And I know that this is his assignment for my life, and this is who I am. Hallelujah. So I don't have to draw back. Marion Williamson says, you don't have to, you don't, there's no need to play small because the world can't receive anything if, you, if you're playing small. 
So you don't, you don't have to do that. But you need to know the greatness of God that's in you. Do you feel something? You, you, you feel something. You, 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 you feel something because what you're feeling is the power of God and the river of God. And, and, and it's time for it to flow. You know, the, this, is the first, this is the first night, and this is getting you ready because when you leave here tonight, it's just a different thing. You, 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 you y'all going to have it. Y'all going to have it. The treasure, the treasure. So this is the vessel. We're the vessel. We're the conduit. We're, we're, we're the ones that carry this great gospel, and, and he's entrusted us, and, and he gives us what to say. Sometimes in that self-same hour, sometimes people say, you have a word for me? And I'm like, gosh, you have a word for me. I'm like, Lord, what is the word for them? I don't know a thing for them. But I'm like, yeah, I'm saying by faith. I'm saying, oh, yeah, that's who, that's who I am. That's what I can do. So I'm saying by faith, and I say, Lord, give me the word. And then I start, when I start praying, in that self same hour, in that same minute, Pastor, you know what I'm talking about? You know you be up here preaching, and God will give you a revelation, and the people think you had it all the time, and you be like, ooh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Making me look good. Making me look good. Listen, he will make you look good. Because you have this treasure in you, and you have a, a, a knowledge beyond this world. You have wisdom beyond this world. You, have, you know what the world doesn't know. You have an edge on them. Because what you're, where you're getting, what you're getting is from a different source. It's the treasure, people. It's the treasure. It's the treasure that's been hidden in you. But I'm saying today, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Paul says, if any man thinks in Galatians 6 and 3, if any man thinks he is something in himself, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. And then when you see, deceive yourself, you really can't help yourself. And sometimes God can't get to you because you deceived yourself. And the Bible says, if you're going to worship God, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're going to try to deceive God and yourself, then, then you know, he can't. He can't do anything. You got to come with truth. You got to have an honest confession. You have to be able to be transparent with God because he knows, he knows anyway. Psst. He knows anyway. You might as well tell him. You might as well confess he knows anyway. My dad said, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool God any of the time. Amen. So if you think that you're something, that you're, you're just deceiving yourself. But I am, I am who I am because of him. I am who I am because of him. It's, it's, it's what's in this earthen vessel. It's the treasure that's in this vessel that causes me to stand here and that you see the manifest presence or the power of God. The, the transcendent power of God, that's the glory of the Christian. It's not the vessel itself, but it's, it's this unestimated uh, treasure that we carry that's beyond price. Uh, and it's because of this power, something beyond the ordinary. Say something beyond the ordinary. You can say things that people will say, how'd you know that? How did you know that? How did you get that answer? How did you come up with that formula? Because your source is him. Because your source is him. And he'll just whisper in the midnight hours while you're asleep. And you wake up thinking it's your own idea. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that is, that, that is who he is, and that's how he works. That's his mode of operation. Something that transcendent power, transcendent power, something beyond ourselves, something different, something unusual, something uncommon. That's what you carry. That's who you are. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's in you. It's not coming on you. It's in you. But we've got to, we have to remove the outer so it can come out of us. Amen? So um, when we understand what what that is, and I want you to understand that, because then you'll be, you stick your chest out and you understand, God, you can use me today. Right. When I walk into a place, I say, the kingdom has just stepped in. <laughs> so Pastor Judy, you ought to quit. No, I'm not quitting. I'm just getting started. When I walk in, God has just stepped up in there. Because I know they have a purpose. 
and I know that God is with me. I may not understand everything. Everything may not work out the way I want it to work out, but I understand that he's the alpha and the omega, so it's not over yet. Every delay is not a denial. And so I understand he's still working on something. He's still working. Ecclesiastes 3 and around 15, it says that all, he makes all things beautiful in his time. So if it's not beautiful yet, it's not his time. Hallelujah. But it's coming. It's getting ready to flow. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and say, let it flow, let it flow. So I read to you where the Bible says we're afflicted in every way. We're, we have to go through something. All the pressures of this life is common to everybody. You're not the only one. Everybody is subject to these trials and these tribulations. It's part of life. It's life. The things that make us and don't break us. The things that, that causes us to know the experiences that we have. I am a better person today because of some of the, what I would have considered the, the failures of the shattered dreams or the bad experiences. I am standing here today saying thank you to everybody that put me here. I'm like, I'm going to write a thank you letter to say, uh, I didn't like it then, but uh, thank you. <laughs> it didn't feel good then, but thank you. So because God is working, he's working something in us. He's, he's working, he's working, he's working, he's working. It's not over, you're in the transit, you're in transition. Look at, look at, look at, our, look at, our, look at our building, look at our place of edifice. Woo! I was here, I think, in November, and I'm just looking at it now. I say, God, look at it. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let the finances flow. Let it flow. Let the people flow. Let the ideas flow. Let the vision flow. Let it flow, God. In every area, let it flow. On every scale, let it flow. In every dimension, let it flow. Let the children's ministry flow. Let everything flow. In Jesus' name. And that's what we're going to see. In the midst of everything that we go through, we have to understand that we're going through it. We're not going to get stuck in it. We're going through it. Come on, somebody that's you in something right now, say, I'm coming through. I'm coming through. I'm coming through. They're not going to be removed out of the way because they're going to work something in us or out of us. All right? So we're always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may uh, uh, be manifested. And, and, and there it is, the two factors. One is an in, inner attitude and understanding to what we must consent to. And the other one is an outward activity to which we are exposed to. But they all have the same, they both have the same results. Uh, so the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal bodies, not in heaven, but right here, right now on earth. Our hour has come. Amen. So this, here it is. It was the death of Jesus. It was the dying of Jesus. It was the cross of Jesus that released the glory of God, that released the hidden treasure of God, where he was able to flow in the fullness of his glory. When he came out of hell, he said, now all power is in my hands. But he had to go through something first. All power is in my hands. So because he overcame, we have already overcome. Come on, say, I am an overcomer. Say it again, I am an overcomer. And it's all because he has overcome that we know we have overcome. This earthen, I'm closing up, this earthen clay has to be broken. So the glory of God, the life of Jesus can be manifested. So it can be demonstrated in the world. Um, the cross had one main purpose. And that was to bring an end to the power of sin. The old, that Jesus had to die and Christ had to be resurrected. The old man has to die. Amen. The contrary man, the rebellious man. The Bible says that Jesus was made sin for us. So, but that had to die. That had to die and he died on the cross. Yeah. He took all of that sin for us, and it was death on the cross. The cross puts to death the proud ego. The, crowd, the, the, the cross puts to death self-centeredness, self-righteousness, self-excuse, self-pity, self-assertion. The cross puts to death the I syndrome. 
I think when you forget the alphabet starts with A instead of I. <laughs> look at Judges, the seventh chapter. You don't have to look at it. I'll just tell you about the story. I do not believe the Apostle Paul may have been thinking about the story of Gideon and his band of 300, the seventh chapter, the 20th verse. When Gideon had a band of, seven, of 300 men, and the Bible lets us know that they gathered around, they were in uh, warfare, they gathered around the camp of the Midianites, and they had a strategy. They had a strategy. And the strategy was take that, 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 that vessel and hide the light. Put the torch inside the vessel so they can't see. And when they began to walk around the encampment, they didn't see the light because it was obscured. And after encircling the camp, at the given signal, at the right time, and this is the right time, we're, we're, this is a noun, this is the moment, at the right time, they broke the vessels and the light flashed forth. Then there was great victory over the enemy. And this is what Paul is trying to get us to see. This is what Jesus is saying tonight. The vessel must be broken in order to let it flow. Hallelujah. So what we're, what we're doing tonight, we're just coming to the Lord and say, here I am, Lord, I'm broken because I want it to flow. And, I, and there's been areas of my life that it, it's, been, it's been coming out, it's been seeping out, and it's been good, but I'm ready for the fullness. I'm ready for you to take all of me. I don't want to withhold anything because I know one thing about the Lord. When you withhold nothing from him, he withholds nothing from you. When you give him your all, he gives him his all. And so we consent tonight to allow the outer man to be broken. We consent tonight that we will allow our genders to be put down. We consent tonight that we don't want, I don't want Judy, I want Christ. I want to be the image, I want my daddy to be proud of me. I want to say what he wants me to say. I want to live like he wants me to live. I want to be a light to a dying world that don't know Jesus. I don't just want the favor of God. I don't just want the blessing of God. I want the blesser. I want the one that would change other lives as they see Christ in me. Hallelujah. And as we begin to understand that with that hidden treasure coming forth, and some of you may say, well, you know, um, uh, why didn't it happen before? Right now is the right time. What's happening in the world today, right now is the right time. Right now is the right time, the day that you hear his voice. Don't harden your heart. And he's trying to move us to a place of surrender so we can just let it rip. So we can say, Lord, it's not my life, it's your life. Any, am I talking to anybody tonight? I don't, I don't want to live unto myself, Pastor. I don't want to live unto myself for myself. That's fruit. That's, I, I might as well just leave here now. But if I can help somebody along the way, then my living is not in vain. If I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if they can see Jesus in me, and then I'm all right, they can see the light of this glorious gospel. Yes, I've taken some hits. Yes, I've been through some storms. Yes, it's been hard, it's not been easy, but it's been worth it. And I wouldn't trade a lifetime for what he has done in my life, not even talk about where I'm going, but to see the people's lives transformed, I can say today that God will give you a life that you've never had if you would get intentional about living for him. Amen. How many want the river to flow through your life? I mean, you want God, just God. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Thank you.